This week we are making a book nook. If you're anything like me and the algorithms on your social media have figured out that you are indeed a book lover, you will have seen these gorgeous little creations all over. Who wouldn't want a tiny mystical magical world sitting on their bookshelves? I know this is exactly what I want, but it wasn't something that I was ever like, oh, I will go spend my own money on this because it feels like a silly purchase. So when my brother got me one of these kits for Christmas, I was absolutely over the moon and I have been so excited to make this video because I knew I wanted to share it with you guys. So here she is. This is the kit that I have. I have so much faith that I will shed a tear over this. I'm sure this is going to break me because I have heard that they are incredibly fiddly. But look, I get a little bookstore to put on my bookshelf. Incredible. I think it doesn't come with glue, so we're gonna need to figure that out. But here are our materials. We have, this looks like some laser cut wood. And then we have all of the papers, which I guess we're gonna have to cut out individually for all of the little books. And there are a lot of them. So that's gonna be fun. And then we have some electronics because I guess there's lights that we have to install. We've got directions in multiple languages. What could go wrong? Okay, let's get going. It looks like step one is creating this little light. That looks like our piece. Do I just like pop it out? What happens if I break it? Okay, it's out. I have the piece that it goes to and I guess we just stick them together somehow? Well, we're stuck on step two because I can't find the piece. I don't understand. I feel like it should be on this thing because that's the thing that I got the thing from. It says J, but <laughs> I figured it out. It's this. Okay. <laughs> that was very difficult for my brain. We have our handy dandy little tool. I'm gonna move you so that you can see what's happening. <laughs> Well, some progress has been made. I think actually hot glue is the perfect glue to use for this because the pieces are so fiddly and wood glue, you really need to like hold for a long time in order for it to actually set. And I think if you used like a contact cement or like a more quick drying glue, you would be absolutely gluing your fingers together because these pieces are just so tiny and fiddly. And it, it is nice that if you make a mistake, you can just peel hot glue off and it doesn't, typically it doesn't damage things. I'm not really expecting this to be structurally sound for the next hundred years. So I think hot glue is the way that we're gonna go. I'm gonna see if I can get this first room built up and then we'll check back in. I would say that putting the things on the walls is going well. I would not say that attaching the walls to the floors is going well. I don't know if you can see that, but that is not a right angle. And I don't know how I'm supposed to get this to slot into here and into here without like before the hot glue dries. So I think maybe I do need wood glue. You know what? I don't think we're gonna glue them. I think that's as solid as that is ever gonna be. That feels pretty together to me. Onwards we go, I guess. These stairs nearly broke me. I tried gluing them with hot glue to start and it did not work. So I got tacky glue, which worked a little bit better, but the glue was just going absolutely everywhere. I, as you can see, I'm wearing new clothes. It took me multiple days just to do these stairs alone. <laughs> Another issue I ran into is that these pieces just kept getting smaller and smaller. And so it was really difficult to like punch them out of the laser cut wood with my fingers. So I ended up using a little screwdriver tool that came into it. And also because they were so small, it was tough to get the glue just where it needed to be and not absolutely everywhere. I feel like this fireplace ended up so 
lopsided when it finally came together. It's been a few days and this project is going to break me. Here is what our bookstore looks like. And I know from the outset, it looks like a lot has been done, okay? I'm pretty proud of this. Look at all of those cute little things. Ready? So exciting. It lights up. Um, but truthfully, I am losing my mind trying to make this work. So the issue is that the pieces are so small. I don't know if you can see. Let me use this as an example. You can see the glue making it larger than it's supposed to be because the way that hot glue is plastic, right? So when it dries, it has substance. And the tacky glue that I bought for this is just so messy. <laughs> it is just so messy. And there are so many tiny little books that need to be done and the paper just absolutely does not stick onto it. So this is so frustrating to create and I just really, really hope that it's gonna be worth it. I have so many tiny pieces of paper that need to be turned into books. You need to make, take a guess, put it in the comments. How many little books do you think I should have to make for this? This is the full size of the bookstore, okay? It's got two floors. How many books do you think? And keep in mind, we're not including this cute little bookshelf here that already has books in it. How many books do you think I need to make? Put it in the comments right now, ready? I need to make 75 books. Where are they all going to go? I don't understand how I could need to make so many of them, but I do in fact need 75. So I'm gonna go to my friend's house and we're gonna watch the new season of Love is Blind and I'm gonna make 75 books while I'm there. I wanted to show you guys the process of making these books. So first I was basically trying to train the paper to go in the shape that I needed it. So I was taking one of these little pieces of wood and folding the paper over it. And then what I would do once I had enough of those is I'd grab a little pieces of wood, put the tacky glue on the wood, and then attach the already pre-folded paper onto it so that it would kind of hold the shape better so that it wouldn't come unglued before the glue dried. This process took forever, but I did have a good time watching Love is Blind with my friend. And then there's this other book type that actually has pages. So you have to fold them accordion style and then you can glue them to the paper cover. But this book making process just took so long and was extremely frustrating. Okay, this is it. Today's the day we are finishing this. If it's the last thing that I do. Most of these pieces look like this now. So we have most of the things at least out and somewhat assembled. So I've done a lot of these like tiny little pieces off camera. I have this bag full of little books that we made painstakingly. I think now we just get to put the finishing touches on this. I'm sure I will still grow some gray hairs in the final stages, but I'm gonna walk through the whole manual because I've been going out of order. I have not been following directions and make sure that I haven't missed anything. And we'll get, we'll get everything together. So I'm going to move you so you can see what I'm doing and we will finish this cute little book nook and then we'll get to go put it on the bookshelf. It is completed. This took me two weeks 
to create, which is longer than I thought it would take. But truthfully, I am so happy with the way that this has turned out. Let me turn the lights on for you. Look at it! I am so proud of how this turned out and truthfully so thankful that I have you guys to force me to actually get this done in a reasonable amount of time because I feel like this is one of those hobbies or projects that would just sit on my dining room table half finished for three months. And I'm glad that it did get done in two weeks because that was two weeks of me prioritizing trying to get this done. All we have left to do is show you the final reveal of all the little details on this that I think make it so cute. And then we'll go find a spot in the bookshelf and talk about lessons learned and whether or not I would do this again. <laughs> I've absolutely destroyed my shelves trying to get the thumbnail that I needed for this video, but I'm so happy to have this on my shelf. I'm not sure exactly where it's gonna go. I think it might actually go up on my classics shelf instead of down here where it is now, but I wanted you to be able to see it in this final clip where we talk about my thoughts and feelings about this whole project and whether or not I would recommend that you do one. So what I will say on whether or not I recommend that you do one, if you're a person who likes puzzles, if you're a person who likes crocheting things, knitting things. If you're a person who really genuinely gets enjoyment out of building a Lego set by following the instructions, I think you'll like this. If you're a person who likes building model airplanes as a child, you will like this project. If all of those things you don't like, please don't do this because it will not be a fun experience for you. Thankfully, I'm a person who genuinely enjoys those types of things but I did have a bit of a stressful time doing this just because the pieces kept breaking. And I think ultimately, if you need it to be perfect, you're gonna be unsatisfied because it definitely isn't perfect. Like mine has hot glue strings everywhere and I broke a lot of the pieces, either trying to get them out of the things or just like trying to put the thing together. I ended up breaking a lot of things. But at the end of the day, I have a cute little library on my bookshelf and I'm so, so happy that I have it. I think genuinely this is such a good gift to give someone, especially if you wanna like gift it to your partner and then do it with them. I think that would be a really cute, fun thing to do together, like a little date night or date two weeks <laughs> sort of a project. Maybe you're going away for the weekend, you want a little project to do together while you're at a cabin in the mountains or something. I think that would be a really cute idea. Ultimately, I'm really glad that I did this. I don't think it's something that I'm gonna do again. I think if you've done one, you've gotten the full experience. So I won't be purchasing one of these again, but I am super happy to have it on my shelf. And I'm really glad that I got to share this experience with you guys. I would love to hear in the comments if you've ever attempted to make one of these before. And if you have, how that experience went for you. And if after watching this video, you've decided to go ahead and try this out, or if this has kind of put you off because either is super valid. I have also seen some people make these without a kit and just craft their way into making a book nook. I'm gonna link Rachel Maxey's. I love watching her channel anyways, but I'm gonna link her video that she did a couple of years ago where she made this really cool looking overgrown temple situation just with her crafting prowess and not with one of these kits. I think that would be a cool idea to do as well if you don't wanna go out and buy something and just use materials that you have around the house. Okay, well, thank you for coming along with me for this journey. It has been full of ups and downs. And at the end of it all, we have something that I am very, very proud of. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will see you next week. I post every Sunday at 11 a.m. Easterns. I will see you next time. Bye.